When you look out into the night sky, and you see the stars far away, you're seeing them because of the light that has traveled from them to you. Now it takes time for light to travel here. So what you're doing is seeing the stars as they were in the past, the amount of time it's taken for the light to reach us. And the further and further away those stars are, the further back in time you're looking. Now, we're seeing a star, let's say, 6,000 years ago. Imagine somebody on that star looking at us. They would be seeing us as we were 6,000 years ago. Which of those two is now? So space and time are linked together. As we are looking across space, we are looking back in time. Welcome to Interscalar, the channel that invites you to study the world with fresh eyes. A huge field of research with new astonishing discoveries awaits you. Please consider that this video is merely an illustration. It does not claim to be complete. Here we refer to the linked publications. Thank you. Today I invite you to travel with me through time and visit one of the wonders of the ancient world, the Great Pyramid of Giza. This video will be the first of a series dedicated to ancient architecture. Like always, we study the facts from the point of view of the physics of numbers. The Giza Pyramid Complex includes the Great Pyramid of Khufu, the Pyramid of Khafre, and the Pyramid of Menkori, along with their associated pyramid complexes and the Great Sphinx of Giza. Conventional archaeology considers these gigantic constructions as tombs, even if there are neither mummies nor even inscriptions were found. Many scientists consider this idea as erroneous. However, what could be the sense of this huge construction? Which function could it have? While modern engineering science shrugs, independent researchers come up with a huge diversity of ideas. Perhaps the Great Pyramid could be a pumping station, a seismic power plant, or an amplifying receiver and sender of time waves. The Arab proverb, man fears time, but time fears the pyramid, refers to its timelessness. Numbers are eternal and universal. So, let us study the Great Pyramid through the physics of numbers. We start with the external dimensions of this huge construction. Egyptologists estimate the dimensions of the Great Pyramid to have originally been 280 Egyptian royal cubits or 146.5 meters high and 440 cubits or 230.4 meters long at each of the four sides of its base. In this case, the ratio of the perimeter to height would approximate 2 pi. That is very interesting, especially if we consider that pi 
is a transcendental number. However, this is a hypothesis based on a model of a geometrically ideal pyramid that does not coincide with the current realities of the Great Pyramid. Considering only realities, the Great Pyramid is what it is, a square frustum, like many other pyramids around the world, including the Great Mexican Pyramids. Actually, the length of the base is not 230 meters, but 225 meters, like the Pyramid of the Sun in Teotihuacan, Mexico, and it fits perfectly with the 34th power of Euler's number relative to the Compton wavelength of the electron. We write E34 in blue. Considering late expansions, removals and repairs, the upper platform on the Great Pyramid is on the height of 137 meters. That is also the height of the neighboring Pyramid of Khafre. This height approximates the 41st power of Euler's number relative to the wavelength of the proton. We write P41 in red. Engineers estimate the current volume of the Great Pyramid to be 2.5 million cubic meters that would approximate the 123rd power of Euler's number relative to the cube of the wavelength of the proton. 123 equals 3 times 41. This means that the volume of the Great Pyramid equals to the cube of its actual height. These are amazing facts. However, from the interscalar point of view, it is not surprising that the Great Pyramid appears as an example of proton and electron stability. The higher and larger a construction, the more important and critical is its stability. Seismic waves or strong wind can cause a periodic excitation of the construction. This repeated energy input lets the construction swing in resonance ever more strongly until its load limit is exceeded and it will be destroyed. Please watch our video Why Euler's Number that explains why Euler's number makes impossible destabilizing resonance. Probably Euler's number is the main stabilizer in the universe. In our first video we have shown how Euler's number stabilizes the solar system. Euler's number allows avoiding parametric resonance independently of the material a construction consists of. For this the properties of a construction must correspond with integer powers of Euler's number relative to the properties of the electron and the proton, the structural elements of matter. The Great Pyramid fulfills this sophisticated criterion. Here I would like to underline that for designing the Great Pyramid it is not enough to know just Euler's number and its stabilizing significance. This achievement requires also the exact knowledge of the properties of the electron and the proton. Obviously, this knowledge presupposes a certain level of technological development that our civilization reached only in the 20th century. Joseph Thompson discovered the electron in 1897. Ernest Rutherford discovered the proton in 1917. Only after the discovery of the Compton effect in 1923, physicists could define the true wavelengths of the electron and the proton. In 1880, Flinders Petrie measured the pyramids of Giza. In his book we can find a chart 
that indicates the elevation of each course of the Great Pyramid. Contrary to conventional expectations, the elevations of higher courses do not always decrease in size, but show a sophisticated pattern. The larger stones form the first course of the pyramid. This course is one and a half meter high. The elevation of the next course is 1.24 meter. Together they reach the height of 2.74 meter. Then follows a course of slightly smaller stones, reaching the height of 4 meters. The elevation of the next three courses is again slightly smaller, reaching the height of 6.8 meters, where we meet a course of larger stones. The stones of the next courses are slightly smaller than 1 meter and continue until the height of 11.3 meters. Then follow courses of much smaller elevation of around 70 centimeters each, until the height of 18 meters, where we meet one course of very large stones like on the base of the pyramid. Courses made of very large stones emerge again at the heights of 30 meters, 54 meters and 89 meters. There is also very large stone at the top of the pyramid. What could be the meaning of this strange sequence of different elevations? Traditional doctrine considers this order random and determined by the availability of building material. Some researchers suppose that on the strongest courses the builders did install rope pulley stations. This might well be about why they chose the heights of 11.3 meters, 18, 30, 54 and 89 meters. By chance? The graphic shows the sequence of these special heights. The sequence is not linear, but exponential, as the approximation curve evidences. Actually, this sequence corresponds with integer powers of Euler's number, like the total height of the pyramid and the length of its base. The graphic shows that heights of proton stability, red, alternate with heights of electron stability, blue. This slide shows how to calculate. The precision of the approximations varies between 1 and 5% of a logarithmic unit. Now we can decode the sequence of the elevation variability of the courses. It approximates the sequence of integer powers of Euler's number relative to the wavelengths of the electron and the proton. As well, the builders considered the roots of Euler's number. Extra large stones used on the heights of 38 meters, 105 meters, and 69 meters evidence their knowledge. The physical sense of this design is to prevent the construction from any type of destabilizing resonance, independently of the nature and the origin of an excitation. The result is lasting stability. The Great Pyramid is the symbol. In conclusion, we can affirm that the builders of the Great Pyramid knew roots and logarithms, Euler's number and its stabilizing significance, the electron, the proton and their properties, and consequently atomic and nuclear physics, and material science. That's all for today. In our next videos we continue the series dedicated to ancient architecture. More information and many examples you can find in my book Global Scaling – The Fundamentals of Interscalar Cosmology. You can free download.
the link you find below this video. Thanks for watching.